South Africa's white working class is going through an intense crisis. In the last two decades, the number of whites living in poverty in the country has been increasing steadily. With the ruling African National Congress introduction of black economic empowerment laws that seek to place black workers ahead of ethnic minority workers, many white South Africans have fallen on hard times, finding themselves living in what are colloquially known as white squatter camps. After hearing about an orphanage that was cut off from its financial support for being too white, I visited one such site to find out what kind of life many white South Africans are being forced to live. Yeah, well the place is about uh, people that is, haven't got place to stay, that stays on the street. So we help them, and especially women that is abused with children, and we help them with that. That is uh, what we are doing here. So, and from the public side outside, we don't get any support. So the main year, we all we are working, we love to do it because, the, especially women and children, they don't get any support from the government. We don't get anything, we don't get anything. We haven't got power or lights, uh, electricity, we haven't got yet. This is one guy standing here. Look at this room, one guy. If this didn't exist, where would these people go? <coughs> they will be on the street. They will be on the street. This squatter camp just outside Johannesburg is one of the many across South Africa and is home to some of the country's most disadvantaged people. It is built on the site of an old dumping ground and is home to around 60 people, most of whom are children. Many of the people who live here have been through some of the worst situations and have been failed by the police, social services, and even charities designed to help South Africa's poorest. Yeah, why couldn't you go to one of the hostels that the government has set up? Because of the skin color. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, it's not at all. We just help white people, yeah. Because there's not other place that does it. You know, if you go to, there's places, there's many places I know, um, Jesus Disciples, uh, Manger, those places they take blacks and they put the whites out. You see, so yeah, that's about it. So wait, you, there are places here that will only help blacks but won't help whites. Yeah, that's true. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Like, I people find that a very bizarre idea in America. Um, yeah, if you, I don't know how to say it. It's just the racism going around. I'm just here to get my life in order and try to give my daughter a better life. <laughs> Were there any other places you could have gone other than here? No. Why not? Nobody else didn't want to help. I've tried a lot and at the end of the day Uncle Kubis was the only one that took me in. Are there no government programs? <laughs> Nothing. This is the only place you could help us with it's a place to stay and things. They are the only ones who helped us with it. No it one else wanted. If it wasn't for them, I would have been in the street. I want to sleep with my wife and my kids on the street. That's it. There's no one who can help us. Because this side of the earth is it's bad for us. And I'm not lying, it's really it's bad. No one can get jobs around here, we're suffering badly. Well, where we lived, things were very dangerous. The one day, um, there was black people walking in the street and they shot through our windows. And I went and the police did nothing. You can't even walk in the streets around, around at night during the day. They always rapes, uh, rape you or they beat you up. They're swearing at you in the language. You, you, they know you don't know the language, but they will come and swear at you, put you breaking you down around you. You know, you don't feel like a person around you anymore. So they're making sure our people, it's, we don't have a life anymore. They will make sure about it. Have you tried to look into leaving South Africa? If I can get a chance, I will go. If I can get a better life that side of the seas, I will go. Me and my two kids, I need a life to make for them. 
In fact, the people here are often refused help based solely on their race. Miss Grace, the de facto mother of the camp, told me how one resident was refused treatment at a hospital because of his white skin, while others were refused a place at a local school for the same reason. In fact, the school asked how many black people were at the camp before refusing based on the fact that there weren't enough. He told on the TV, on the news, shoot the boo, kill the boo. What we are like, just living also, we are also um, human beings. We also have got a life, we also got, we are like human beings, just like them, just the color in the land, which is different. But why are they against us? Even black kids were beating my kids up, my five-year-old. Told them, this is not for you anymore. South Africa, it's for ours, for, our, for them. And that's why we like this. I don't want to give my kids a life like this. I want to give them what they need, and I can't. I'm fed up with this country now. So without this place open, where would these kids be? They will be on the streets. This camp isn't like the refugee camps that you see across Europe for illegal migrants. The people here are largely women and children. They want to work. They haven't illegally crossed any borders, and they're trying to do things right. Yet they live like this within their own nation. And while the world touts their love for refugees, because of their skin color, the white minority in South Africa has been forgotten. Thank you so much for watching this video. I just wanted to let you know that this is actually just a short clip from a much larger documentary project I'm working on called Farmlands. Now there are a million ways you can help with this project and spread the word about the situation going on in South Africa. If you want to know how you can do that, go down to the links below or visit farmlands.online. I'll see you next time.